The State Department provided a response regarding its PEPFAR program, which reads in part, quote, PEPFAR does not fund abortions, and PEPFAR funds cannot be used to lobby for or against abortion. And the Biden-Harris administration continues to urge Congress to pass a clean reauthorization of PEPFAR as part of our longstanding commitment to ending HIV AIDS as a public health threat by 2030. And Dr. Dave joins us now. He's a contributor to Forbes on issues surrounding health care. Also with us, Democratic Senator Ben Cardin of Maryland. He's chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and he's out with a new op-ed on for MSNBC urging his colleagues to renew this world-changing legislation. Also joining us, visiting scholar at Johns Hopkins University, Maya Rockemore Cummings. She is moderator for an event the school is hosting for World AIDS Day, focusing on how marginalized communities continue to bear a disproportionate burden of new infections. And, and Senator, we saw the State Department uh, statement. Could not be any clearer. PEPFAR is not about abortions. PEPFAR can't, the money can't be used to lobby for abortions, can't be used to, to perform abortions. It's about saving lives absolutely. with AIDS. It's absolutely a fabricated issue. There is no funding for abortion in the PEPFAR program. The PEPFAR program is pro-life. 25 million lives have been saved. Right. I've been to Africa. I've seen the, the people whose lives have been saved as a result of the PEPFAR program now leading their country. We've seen it provide stability in African nations. We've seen it provide economic prosperity and stronger relations with the United States. This has been a transformational program, bipartisan, sponsored originally by President George W. Bush, bipartisan support. Right. This is the first time we've seen a partisan action by those that are trying to make abortion. It, it just makes no sense. And, and, and Dr. Dave, you've written, I've, I think, three, four articles uh, for Forbes, uh, and, and you just laid out what the senator just said. Uh, you, you, you laid out the fact that Abortion is being pulled into this when it doesn't belong there by by some Republicans in the House. I'm curious. So what is the impact if PEPFAR goes away? There are some short term impacts, Joe, and then some longer term things in the short term. It's going to pull away the confidence in those PEPFAR supported countries mm -hmm. in the longer term. It will suppress innovation. It will harm the ability for the programs to be developed and, and run. We, you, you guys all know how hard it is to put a program together. Imagine if now you only have a year window instead of five and you're trying to plan programs around kids and teenagers and young adults. It will suppress innovation, an, an overlooked phenomenon where the, the funding for new things like uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis, the, the we've taken 20 years ago, it was about $10,000 per year per patient mm -hmm. to treat HIV. Now it's about $50, $40 a year. Five years from now, if we suppress innovation and money into funding and supporting uh, new products and services, it, we won't make the same strides. It will reverse itself. It's still a very active epidemic. So instead of saving lives, people... Yep. Correct. Yeah. yeah. People uh, will die. Yeah. Uh, Maya, and you're looking at specifically marginalized communities and, and how they can be impacted. And, of course, you're moderating an event at Hopkins about this. Right. Tell us all about it. So we're actually hosting an event today called HIV and the Politics of AIDS. Uh, we're looking at the Minority AIDS Initiative at 25. Uh, many people don't know uh, that that African Americans and Latinos have been disproportionately uh, represented amongst the AIDS population basically since the early uh, 80s. Uh, and in approximately 1987, actually, African Americans exceeded uh, white Americans in terms of the percentage incidence of HIV amongst the population. So this has been a black and brown epidemic for quite some time now. Uh, and in 2019, out of all new infections, African Americans and Latinos were 67 percent. Mm -hmm. So I, on, on the international front, uh, we know that you know PEPFAR has done a lot in sub-Saharan Africa. But I actually think that this argument about uh, abortion is a red herring. Mm -hmm. I think that we're seeing a continuation of the ultra-nationalist right wing. Uh, some people call it white 
Christian nationalism, uh, efforts to basically go after uh, anything that supports people of color, uh, anything that supports LGBTQ communities, uh, anything that supports women. Uh, and certainly we know that the Minority AIDS Initiative, which was created in 1998 by Maxine Waters in order to address the disparities and was actually undercut uh, mm -hmm. by the Bush, George W. Bush administration uh, in terms of its ability to actually um, uh, uh, fund communities of color, particularly uh, minority-led organizations, that we have a problem uh, because we have, I think, racism interceding uh, in our ability to effectively provide care. Uh, we know that now the new infections are hitting the South hardest, those states that for, refuse to expand Medicaid. So we've got a problem in this country. We, what we did for PEPFAR was fantastic. We need PEPFAR for America, and we mm -hmm. need it to be non-discriminatory. So Johns Hopkins is looking at this today. Uh, the Center for Health Disparities is actually leading this uh, under uh, the leadership of Dr. Daryl Gaskin. That's fantastic. You know, Peter, though, what's, what's so fascinating is uh, Maya talked about how Christian nationalists, extreme right people may be fighting back against PEPFAR. The great irony of that is George W. Bush yeah. was yeah. moved by his evangelical exactly. faith. Exactly. You, you look at the people that were around him, Mike Gerson, Pete Wainer, other people that were around him, evangelicals, and, and, and told him, this is the yeah. issue of our time. This is what we need to do as evangelicals. We need to save millions of lives. There's a plague in Africa. We need to save millions of lives. Exactly. And so you have people that are claiming to be pro-life trying to kill a program that was inspired by the New Testament. Yeah, that's exactly right. He, he called, George W. Bush calls in his staff. He calls in a guy named Tony Fauci. He says, what can we do to make a difference? Not just down the road with research money on a vaccine. What can we do to make a difference today? And Tony Fauci actually says, you can save lives by, by, by doing what you end up, he ended up doing. And you know who's looked at this allegation that this current program is somehow funding abortions or somehow involved in abortions and decided it's not true? Hmm. George W. Bush. Arguably the most pro-life president we've had since Reagan, right? Genuinely in his gut. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump, not really pro-life. He did a lot for right. pro-life interests, but he was not personally pro-life. Right. Uh. George W. Bush is genuinely pro-life. He has looked at this program. He has said, there's nothing to this. And he's told the Congress this. And yet his fellow Republicans aren't listening to him. And I'm curious, Senator, when you think about that, like, wh who are the Republicans today who have influence over their colleagues who are blocking this and say, look, we understand your concerns. They're not borne out. Don't worry about it. This is not doing what you think it's doing. Who do they listen to, if not George W. Bush at this so point? Well, the problem we have, of course, is that the national groups are, are interfering with, I think, the common sense of, of the Republicans right now. They're concerned about how they get rated on a vote mm -hmm. rather than looking at the facts behind the issue. I mean, you're absolutely right. This, is, this program has been transformational. It's made a huge difference. If we don't reauthorize, it gives the message that we're not in the, to complete the job. Mm. And that, that we need the partners around the world to work with us. And if the United States is not there, the concern is whether we will be able to complete the work and, and rid the world of, of HIV AIDS. So uh, we are working with Republicans. I think that most realize we need to get this done. We're going to try to find a way forward. But quite frankly, they're concerned about the outside rating groups that say this is uh, yeah. against pro-life. Yeah. Uh, chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Ben Cardin. Morning, Joe. Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Dave Campbell, thank you for uh, shining a light on this continuously. And visiting scholar at Johns Hopkins University, Maya Rockymore Cummings. It's great to see you again, and thank you, you for coming on today.